Championship finalist, Titan! The two teams are ready. Let's find out how this first finals match goes. In three, two, one, go! This is 45 seconds of autonomous. All of this is pre-programmed. Shanghai going up for their first shots, two going up high. Here comes Wisco out of Wisconsin. They get two up high as well. At 30 seconds left, we've got four more up high from Shanghai, three up from Wisco, another set going up high as well. Looks like Shanghai is beating Wisco to the center line. But both sides loading up those high goals, one after another. Shanghai, another set of four, 12 seconds left on the clock. Here we go, another set of three, but only one managing to stay in. The second Wisco bot tried to pill up from the field. Two seconds left, one. And that is it at the buzzer. Red takes the autonomous because blue crossed the line in that period. Drivers ready. Three, two, one, go! Both of these teams dominated their respective divisions and proved their medal, making it here to the Vex Dome. SJTU cleaning up their side of the field, now coming over to Bully Wisco for some reloads. Wisco sends up a set of three. Red Lions currently leading 89 to 70 in our real time score. SJTU cleaning up underneath the blue high goal. Here goes one, there goes two, three. Beautiful shots up from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Over on red, Wisco, UT, UW Platteville going up high. Those discs going over the edge with 35 seconds. We go to the rollers. We've got one up for red, three for blue with 29 seconds to go. SJTU holding position, waiting for the end game. You see all these custom designed elements looking to give these teams the advantage as we come to 17 seconds, heading over to the rollers. 15 seconds, go. Wisco trying to go for the rolls as well. 10 seconds, here goes the end game. One blocker up and Wisco deploys their end game. Five seconds, three, two, one. One more deployment on red. It Incredible end game right there. Only one robot from either side deployed. We'll let the referees tally up all of this. And in the meantime, throwing it back to you, Grant. Thanks so much, George. I love VexU. VexU, you just saw Wisco deploy one of the most unique mechanisms we've ever seen here. It's, I, it might be my favorite end game mechanism. But, in addition to what you saw Wisco do, there was another robot in the VEX U divisions that I am going to call the most unique robot in VEX history. I am joined by Team Pyro. Pyro, how's it going? Pretty good. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I mean, so we saw something that you guys created that any, everybody in VEX U knows about it. A lot of the staff knows about it. Not uh, a lot of the middle school or Jared team might be familiar with it. I would call you guys some creative evil geniuses. Let's take a look at it in action and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> what do y'all think? <laughs> so, Kenneth, what did we just see? Tell me about this robot. That's our VEXU legal pneumatic powered descorer robot. <laughs> or what we like to call uh, the air blast robot. The air blast. So for those who don't know, uh, VEXU parts rules are a little bit different. You're allowed to use custom components in a number of different ways. One of the key ways is that there are basically no limits on pneumatics. Uh, you can use any off the shelf pneumatics component as long as it's unmodified, charged to 100 PSI, and safe. So talk me through how you were able to satisfy all three of those criteria. Start with the unmodified part, because that's my favorite part. Yeah, so this is just a, a, a tire seeder tank off of Amazon. We didn't do anything to it, including uh, the valve. The valve is the exact same as came with it. And we modified the valve so that to use uh, motors to actuate it. 
Yeah, it didn't modify, it integrated the motors into it. So that C channel actually wraps around the valve and is actuated by four motors so that you're basically doing what a human's hand would do. Right? Exactly, exactly. All right, so that was the unmodified part. Uh, the uh, safe part, um, tell me about the, some of the testing you did to ensure safety. Yeah, in order to keep it safe, we did a lot of testing with different pressures, different distances, different nozzles, and we had a sound uh, decibel meter there so that uh, the noise would never go above like a, a level that would uh, hurt anybody. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, I can attest. I was next to the field. It's loud. It catches your eye, but it felt safe to me. Um, and then I don't remember what the third one was, but one of the other things I found re really interesting, um, tell them all how long you've been working on this. Oh, we've been working on this all season. We've been keeping it a secret so no one would uh, uh, outlaw it. <laughs> well, I, well, I can tell you... <laughs> So when I first went down to the division to check it out in action, the, one of the things they said to me was, thank you for making this legal. And I said, I am happy to make this legal. It was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So Pyro, Kenneth, you guys should be proud of what you accomplished. Uh, give it up for Pyro, y'all. All right, with that being said,